interstellar travel, one of the most famous plot bases for any science fiction movie, an astronaut's dream and childhood fantasy of many. Humans have always been curious about what lies beyond the boundaries of our solar system and the limitless possibilities space has to offer. Scientists, physicists, and space organizations are actively working on ways to take space travel to the absolute next level. From wormholes to warp drives, antimatter, and propulsion jets, nothing is off the table. Welcome to Fact Nominal. For today's video, we take a deep dive into the world of interstellar space travel and answer the burning question, will mankind ever become an intergalactic species? The idea that human beings can travel beyond the solar system and from one planet to another has fascinated mankind since there was a realization that there is, in fact, a lot more out there than just planet Earth and our little solar system. The idea that there could be life beyond what we know, trapped inside the confines of our solar system or even our own planet, is enough reason to want to discover just how we can get ourselves out there. By definition, interstellar travel refers to the idea of either probes or crewed spacecraft traveling between stars and planetary systems in a galaxy. At first, the definition seems pretty easy to grasp, given the word inter, meaning between, while stellar refers to stars. Seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Well, not quite. There's a distinction to where interstellar space itself actually begins. Scientists and astronomers define the beginning, or the boundaries of interstellar space, the place where the constant flow of material in the magnetic field of the Sun stop affecting its surroundings. This place is also otherwise known as the heliopause. This is the region that marks the end of the heliosphere that we're more familiar with, the region created by our Sun, when it sends a constant flow of particles and magnetic field out into space at over 670,000 miles per hour. Say, hypothetically, you were to travel through space, how then exactly would you know that you've arrived in interstellar space? In this region, outside the Sun's heliosphere, there would be an increase in cold particles around you, as opposed to the hot particles around the Sun, along with a magnetic field that doesn't originate from the Sun either. If you've made it this far, congratulations, you've made it to interstellar space. While interstellar travel sounds great in theory, we're yet to actually see it become a reality. There are a number of challenges and hurdles we're yet to overcome, or at least work our way around, if we want to travel to the stars and beyond. Interstellar travel is, in fact, much more complex than interplanetary travel. The distances between the planets in the solar system are typically measured in Standard Astronomical Units, or AU, while, on the other hand, dispatches between the stars are typically hundreds of thousands of AU and are expressed in terms of light years. Let's take Alpha Centauri, our nearest neighboring solar system, as a key example. It's estimated that in approximately 5 billion years, the Sun will turn into a red giant star, leaving behind its main sequence status to transform into a glowing, malevolent ball that's going to completely consume Mercury, Venus, Mars, and our planet Earth. Sounds concerning. Indeed, it is. In order to survive this, perhaps human beings would have to migrate to another star system like Alpha Centauri, for example, if we were able to find a planetary home there. As good as that sounds, this alone could take four years just to get there, and that's considering if we're able to travel at the speed of light. NASA's legendary missions Voyager 1, its sister spacecraft Voyager 2, and in more recent times even the New Horizons mission have all reached a point where no other spacecraft have ever gone. The Voyager missions in particular have effectively left the solar system and are now in a region where the solar wind emanating from the Sun is replaced with general galactic background and particles. The two are already on their interstellar space journey, but yet they're almost going nowhere. 
Each of the spacecraft are traveling at tens of thousands of miles per hour, headed in no particular direction and to no certain star. This is because their main purpose of exploring the planets inside our solar system has already been served, and the mission has been extended to a point that no one would have ever thought to be possible. They're now giving us so much data and insight into what space is like beyond the boundaries of the solar system. But beyond that, these sister craft aren't going anywhere and are destined to float through interstellar space for as long as they can. Even if either one of the spacecraft were headed towards our nearest neighbor Proxima Centauri, which is just barely four light years away, or about 25 trillion miles, with the current speed and technology on board, it would take about 80,000 years to reach there, which is of no help to us at all, considering we won't be here to experience that. The fastest spacecraft ever, the Parker Solar Probe, will be reaching a top speed of 450,000 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, it would take the spacecraft about 20 seconds to travel from Los Angeles to New York City at that speed. Wouldn't that be nice? But when it comes to visiting our nearest neighboring solar system, even this space wonder would take 6,633 years to reach it. While some may scoff at the mere idea of interstellar travel, there is yet some hope. The fact that there's no law of physics that outright forbids it is at the very least encouraging. There are several theoretical and hypothetical means permitted by our current laws of physics that could make interstellar travel possible. Two of the most intriguing theories are wormholes and warp drives. Wormholes are a hypothetical phenomenon that form when two extremely dense entities, such as two black holes, distort and bend the very fabric of space and time so much so that a tunnel between the two is formed. According to special relativity, no usable information can travel faster than light. You can only go faster than light if you're able to globally warp space and time, that is, general relativity. For example, the passenger seated inside a rocket may feel like he's going slower than light, but once the rocket has arrived at its destination and the time is compared, it would seem as if the rocket went faster than light because it warped space and time, whether that be by taking a shortcut or contracting and stretching space itself. General relativity may yield faster than light travel via these wormholes. As of now, there's no evidence that these wormholes exist, and one of the main downsides to this theory is that any matter passing through the wormhole could trigger catastrophe and cause the wormhole to completely break down. The idea here is to assemble stellar amounts of energy in a spinning ring. The centrifugal force would prevent the ring from collapsing, and anyone passing through the ring would not be ripped apart, but instead wind up in an entirely different part of the universe. Then there are warp drives. If you're a Star Trek fan, you're sure to know this. What if a starship could compress space in front of it while expanding space-time behind it at the same time? In 1994, Miguel Alcubierre, Mexican theoretical physicist, showed through his research that doing so was actually not just some far-fetched movie concept, but actually quite possible. Theory of relativity is really simple. Movement is relative. Speeds are relative. You only have to say you're moving with respect to something. The first one to thought about this was Galileo. He made a thought experiment. He was thinking you're in a ship at sea, in a room with no windows, far away from the continent. And the question is, can you do any experiment in that ship that tells you if the ship is moving with respect to distant land or if it's still with respect to distant land? And the, the answer is you can't. There's absolutely no way to know within the ship if it's moving with respect to land, okay? That's relativity, okay? There is no absolute speed. Speed is relative. He used mathematical calculations within the laws of general relativity to probe the same. For example, if you're standing at point A and you can travel at one meter per second, it would take you about 19 seconds to get to point B. But if you were able to compress space between you and point B, at that speed you could be at point B in one second. 
This theory doesn't contradict any laws of relativity, and he was able to prove it, on paper at least. The main drawback here, though, the warp drive would require negative mass or a ring of negative energy in order to work. Physicists have never observed negative mass, leaving negative energy as the only option. This too would be difficult, as for the warp drive to work, it would need a lot of matter to create said negative energy. LQBA estimated that a warp drive with a 100-meter bubble would require the mass of the entire universe. In 1999, Chris Vandenbroek showed that by expanding the volume inside the bubble whilst keeping the surface area constant would help to significantly reduce the energy requirements. But this too wasn't a clear solution just yet. In more recent years, papers by Alexei Bobrek and Gianni Matire and another independent study by Eric Lenz have proposed advanced solutions of this same warp drive by removing the need for negative energy in the first place. These are still, however, just mathematical models, and we'll have to wait for more experimental proof on the same. Besides the general theories on how we can get to interstellar travel, there have been other proposed methods and considerations of what kind of rockets can be used to achieve this. Ion engines are a type of electric propulsion where electric power is used to create charged particles of the propellant and accelerate them to extremely high velocities. Ion engines typically have low force, but can achieve top speed that would be needed for the journey. The only flaw back here is the electrical power that will be available in the spacecraft and the gas ions being accelerated. Nuclear fusion rockets have been another consideration. These starships would be powered by nuclear fusion reactions and should conceivably be able to reach speeds of 10% of the speed of light. In theory, physicists have proved that it could possibly push a vehicle close to the speed of light, but then again, close and almost are not nearly good enough. Antimatter rockets, on the other hand, would have a far higher energy density and specific impulse as compared to any other proposed class of rocket. But as with every proposed method so far, this comes with a major issue, antimatter. It would require a large quantity of antimatter for what it seeks to achieve, which is a whole other story altogether. This is not even taking into account high-energy gamma radiation, protection needed for passengers on board due to heat transfer from the exhaust of the vehicle, and so much more. In 2019, NASA scientist Dr. David Burns carried out an independent study where he proposed a helical engine concept which would use a particle accelerator to accelerate particles to near the speed of light. Particles traveling at such incredible speeds acquire more mass, and this mass change in turn would create more acceleration. According to Burns, the spacecraft could theoretically reach 99% the speed of light. But then again, this is just in theory, and many have accused him of very far-fetched assumptions and claims. Aside from this, there is a theory that if aliens do exist, then these intelligent creatures might know something about quantum mechanics that we as human beings have yet to discover. Yes, quantum mechanics, the uber-powerful theory of the atomic and subatomic world which is notorious for having been debated over for years and years. No matter how much the theory's been worked into perfection, there's a deep belief that we're not yet fully understanding all that it's trying to tell us about the nature of reality. Several physicists and scientists are even working on a way to combine quantum mechanics and general relativity into a theory of quantum gravity. Perhaps there is some truth to it, but until we figure out a way to bring the two together in a theory of everything, there's not much we can comment on quantum mechanics. You've probably guessed by now that there are significant challenges yet to be overcome. If we can even dream of becoming an intergalactic species, or even getting an unmanned spacecraft into interstellar space to really study it. 
As we've already established, interstellar space travel is first and foremost so very difficult due to its distance. It's simply just too far away, and we don't yet have the technology that can take us there safely and bring us back if needed. A significant factor that also contributes to the hardships regarding interstellar travel is the amount of energy it would require to do so. Even with having a plan and all the resources, without the needed energy, we're going absolutely nowhere. The velocity for a crewed round trip of a few decades to even the nearest star like Proxima Centauri is several thousand times greater than those of present space vehicles. Perhaps one of the most important things that many theories tend not to take into consideration is the interstellar medium. Having a thorough knowledge of the properties of the gas and dust in the interstellar region of space through which the spacecraft, whether manned or unmanned, would have to travel is an essential part of the design. Traveling at an incredible speed that would be needed for such travel could significantly damage the craft over time. Various shielding methods and materials would be required, and perhaps ones that we haven't even tested yet. Larger objects floating around in space and impacting the craft also pose a threat, and we must find a way to absolutely avoid that. For crews on such interstellar ships, there would be significant hazards, including long-term isolation, being exposed to ionized radiation, the effects of weightlessness on the bones, muscles, joints, immune system, and just overall well-being. There's no saying that we even know how humans would survive beyond planet Earth and the comforts of the atmosphere that envelops us. Not to mention the amount of money, funds, material, and support that would be needed for these missions. That being said, a few centuries ago, no one would have ever believed that we would be able to have a man walk on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind or spacecraft leaving the solar system. So, in short, never say never. Mankind's need for exploration, to know what lies beyond, will continue to inspire and help us push beyond the limitations that we're currently faced with. Perhaps one day, civilization would reach a point where they'll even wonder how their ancestors ever stuck to just one planet or one solar system. Hypothetically though, if we were to actually achieve interstellar travel, what would life be like? Where would we go and live? Maybe by 2100, we may have established several bases all over different locations in space, but a mass exodus from Earth might not be a possibility for everyone. There's still no Earth 2.0, just some potential ones, but for sustaining human life, we need to be certain that life can thrive and grow. As of right now, the Breakthrough Starshot is a mission that aims to demonstrate the proof of concept for ultra-fast light-driven nanocraft, and perhaps lay the foundation for an official first launch to Alpha Centauri within the next generation. It's a next frontier. This is something that uh, people have been dreaming and thinking about for thousands of years. There is, of course, also the added benefit of solar system exploration and detecting any Earth-crossing asteroids. But missions like this are what will propel us into the future. Most scientists and astronomers tend to doubt interstellar travel because the light barrier is just so difficult to break. But if we truly want to go faster than light, we must go beyond special relativity to general relativity and quantum theory. Who knows? We can't completely rule out the possibility of achieving interstellar travel if an advanced civilization can attain enough energy required to destabilize space and time. To conclude, if interstellar travel is possible or not, it seems like only time will tell. Even the most optimistic views on interstellar space travel believe that it might happen decades into the future, while some argue that we're definitely looking at at least another century or more to fulfill this dream. 
So, for now, until we're able to work out a way to warp space and time and overcome considerable technological and economic challenges, the dream of interstellar travel, whether manned or unmanned, might just be a very slow boat to the future. Do you think mankind can one day achieve interstellar travel? Tell us in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.